<laughs> oh, you're back. Uh, uh, let me clean up in here real fast. Astos's curse has put our prince into a deep sleep from which he cannot awake. Please, will you not aid our slumbering prince? But Dark Elf King Astos stole into the castle and placed a curse on our prince. Then Astos carted away the castle's treasures. I'm sorry about that. I wasn't expecting you to come back. So, let's, let's play some Final Fantasy. I've heard rumors of a witch who can brew any potion you could imagine. Let's see, I think her name was Matoya. <gasps> Don't you know it's rude to enter without knocking? <laughs> the use of today, no manners at all. You came back at a good time. Best character in the game. So they made Matoya all the way back in the first game. I love witches who live in caves. The prince has slept under Astos's curse for five years now. There must be a concoction that can rouse one who sleeps so... but where? The dwarves live in a cave on the western edge of the Aldean Sea. They're a friendly bunch. Well, I'm glad to hear they're friendly. I'm excited that I ran into a Final Fantasy character. I don't know how many games Matoya is in. I don't really think she's in a lot of them. But, uh, still, I wonder if Sid's already in the first game. I need to figure out how to get to the top there without accidentally walking off of this screen. I'll get there eventually, as long as you believe in me. At least I figured out what the run button is. Can I inch out this way? I can. The treasure room has been secured with the mystic key. Another one. I'm going to have a lot of those to remember. Hopefully I don't forget any when I finally get that key. So I haven't read the book yet, but I did look at the profiles at the beginning to see what our characters' personalities are supposed to be. Because I think they're just going to stay silent protagonists. So I thought I'd share them here. Cetro. One of the warriors of light who has lost his memories. Holder of a fragment of the fire crystal. He begins his journey as a warrior and ends it as a knight. Spoilers! Spoilers right in the profile. Honest and skilled with a sword, he's the leader. Of sorts. But his straightforward approach means he often becomes overly focused on his goal and loses sight of his surroundings. Okay, so... In the game, I don't think there's been any mention of him losing his memories, so I was kind of surprised by that. I wonder if it'll come up later, or if this is something that was made for the story, because I, I don't think he's going to talk in the game. Also, I've always been surprised that he had the fire crystal, because I would have thought he'd have the earth crystal. I think of him as the tank, kind of, of this group, and I would think the earth is more something that takes a hit. Well, this place seems cursed. I can't believe there's more doors. How many of these doors are there going to be? Seems like there's one everywhere we go. 
Okay, so we did fighter. He's blunt and he's focused on his goals. So I thought we would do thief next, since he's second in line. So what do we have about thief? Zover. I think that's how it would be said. One of the warriors of light and a holder of a fragment of the wind crystal. Initially a thief, he is later granted the power of a ninja. Spoilers again. Level-headed and sarcastic, he has a quick wit and quick fingers. His job in the party is to keep Cetril's enthusiasm in check. He is the most concerned about how they lost their memories and why they have to fight. Okay, so we have stuff about memories again here, which hasn't been mentioned in the story. And I guess Cetril is very enthusiastic. I didn't quite get that from his profile, but we're seeing it here. I'm not too surprised that the thief is sarcastic and witty, but uh, I, I think the wind crystal kind of suits him. I would expect that of the thief because it seems like the fast one. I wonder if the memory thing is what we were supposed to take from when it said that uh, they didn't know what the crystals were for. Okay, so let's do the next one. That would be White Mage. Flora, the lone woman among the Warriors of Light and the holder of a fragment of the Water Crystal. She is initially a White Mage, but she eventually gains the skills of a White Wizard. She is kind and cares for her friends, but when anger gets the better of her, she can be the most frightening of the four. Never piss off your healer, guys. So that mostly just says that she's nice unless she gets angry. It's not really a lot in that profile. Okay, we got one more. Black Mage. Teal. One of the Warriors of Light and holder of a fragment of the Earth Crystal. He begins his journey as a Black Mage, but is later granted the power of a Black Wizard. A quiet and kind-hearted man, he can talk to animals. He speaks little. But when he does, his allies listen. So, I would have thought that Black Mage would have the fire crystal, because I kind of pictured him as setting everything on fire. That seems to be what Black Mages do. But, um, <laughs> but I guess he's got the earth crystal, and the warrior has the fire crystal. Like, maybe because the warrior is red all over. But, uh... I didn't know about this talking to animals thing. That that hasn't come up either. <laughs> so I wonder if that will come in the game at all. And I guess he's not much of a talker. By the way, it looks like I found this cave with more bats in it. I don't know what it's here for, but it's there, so we're going in. Did they use white wizard and black wizard again? I know they use ninja, but the other ones don't seem like they kept them, or kept them around very long. The knight, white wizard, black wizard. I know in like Final Fantasy XIV, white mage and black mage are the upgrades for conjurer and the other one that I'm not going to bother trying to say. The, the margest? But, uh, how, do you, how do you say that? Okay, it looks like Thaumaturge. Uh, they, they picked quite the word for that. But, uh... Yeah, I don't really associate Knight, White Wizard, or Black Wizard with Final Fantasy specifically. It's the Black Mage, White Mage, Warrior, and Thief that really stuck around. And then I know Ninja comes up again. But I think those other ones get left behind. Maybe in the next couple of games? But I don't remember seeing them in the later ones. I couldn't be wrong, but I don't remember them. Seeing that crawler reminds me of Crawler's Nest in Final Fantasy XI. People would just go there and level all day, farm them, and you'd pull a million of them. <laughs> and, oh man, you spend so much time in Crawler's Nest. That makes me feel nostalgic for Final Fantasy XI. I'm probably not going to do XI and XIV. For this series. I'm going to do the single player games. Because 11 and 14 are very long. 11 has over 20 years of content now, doesn't it? It's 
So that would be really, really long. Maybe if I get a group of people together to play it, I'll do that in the future. But right now I'm going to skip over those two. But man, I played Final Fantasy XI a long time. And it was a good game. It was clunky and slow. That everything took a lot of time. But there were a lot of good aspects to it, like... Oh man, like I remember the pirate ship. When you go on the boat from Sobina to Mara? Like, something like that. Mara? But there's a boat that goes between them. And I remember way back when the game was brand new and everybody was just starting and everybody was just reaching that area. And I was on that boat with a bunch of people just fishing and then <laughs> evil music started playing and nobody knew what was happening because the game was still new. And so everybody's freaking out. It's like, why, why is there suddenly evil music? <laughs> and then in the distance, you can see a pirate ship just way in the distance and it's slowly getting closer and closer and closer. <laughs> and so you had all these little tiny fishermen freaking out because this pirate ship's coming in. I think that's one of my favorite encounters that I've had in any game because it was brand new. Nobody knew what was happening. And it was just such a neat encounter. It had good music and had a really great setup. You're sitting there and you're watching in the distance this ship coming closer and you know stuff's going to happen <laughs> and you don't know what. So I... That game had a lot of good stuff to it. I really kind of miss it. But it also was very slow and I think it would be hard to go back to, you know, when you're used to faster games now. But, but I think maybe I will play it again in the future if I get the setup for it and, and have people probably to play with so that you're not wasting a lot of time. Or wasting as much time. It's a very time-wasted game, very grindy. It's kind of a shame you can only have an experience like that once because then the word gets out and everybody knows about it and you're not going to be surprised by it again. But when you get to be one of the first ones who encounters something like that and you get to experience actually seeing it first, that, that's always a really fun thing. But you don't get to do that too often. We might not have been the very first ones but word hadn't gotten around yet so Everybody on this ship was trying to form a party and figure out what to do. <laughs> Hiding. But usually, if you're playing a game, there's already walkthrough and you look it up and everybody already knows every all about everything. So you don't get to be surprised too often in a big group like that where everybody, where, no, where nobody knows what's going on. And everybody gets to discover it together. So dealing with this poison is really getting to me. I needed more antidotes before I went in. I need to walk my guys back and get them revived. I have a bit of walking to do, so I said last video that I would show the AI images that somebody tried to generate for me for my banner. I was hiring an artist, but they weren't drawing it. They were trying to generate it. And it was a pain in the butt to deal with. And I said I would show those, and I didn't forget. So I gave them the character design sheet. And I also gave them a list of things that I wanted in the image. And this was just an idea of what to do for the banner. I don't know if it would have turned out alright. But I was going to try it out and see how it, how it worked. So what I told them was... First thing I told them was the character was male. Because I didn't want them to get confused by him wearing pink. Then I said I wanted him to be outside, in a lounge chair, holding a video game controller. I wanted there to be a table with books on it next to him. And I wanted sugar and thyme plants. And I wanted it to be extra wide because it was for a banner. So that's basically what I asked for. And if it was a little bit off, I wouldn't have worried that much about it. I just would have paid for it and maybe even gone with it. Like if the sugar and thyme plants weren't there and it was just normal plants, I, I wouldn't have cared that much. 
And yes, I did travel all the way to Cornelia to save a little money on raising my guys. I'm cheap, so sue me. I also had put together a quick mock-up just to give them an idea of what I was looking for. I know you're probably looking at this and thinking, why do you even need to hire an artist with those kind of skills? But you know, you've got to support the community sometimes. So let's look at this while I stock up on supplies. So pulling up the first one, and this is the one that got the closest. You can already see some problems. You know, at least it's a male. I think it's a male. So I'm going to count it as male. But there's a lot of stuff going on here that is not at all what I asked for. And you can definitely see there are some very strange aspects to it. And even now, when I look at the hand, I didn't notice this right away before, but one of the hands is just sort of a glob. So, of the things I asked for, I, I guess you could count him as male. He is outside. There's no chair. He's not holding a controller. There's no table with books on it. There's no sugar and thyme plants. And it's not extra wide. But even beyond that, there's a lot of things you would not expect if somebody was drawing it for you. He's not in the same outfit at all. It looks like he's in a dress of some sort. The ears stand out the most. Like, what is going on with these ears? Why are they looking? And then he's in tights or something. It looks like in tennis shoes. When you actually look at the background and stuff, I have no idea what some of it's supposed to be because it's probably, you know, just AI. So I was already suspecting at this point that they were using AI. Sometimes people get things, you know, you tell them to draw something and they interpret a, diff a different way than what you expected. And that's fine, that happens sometimes. But this is completely off. There's nothing here that looks anything like what I was asking for. But still, this is the one that got the closest of all of them. Of the ones that they they sent me, this one most looks like the character, and it doesn't look like the character at all. Maybe it's got kind of hair somewhat similar. It's shorter, but somewhat similar. I guess the face could work. There's no glasses. The ears obviously are completely wrong. The ears are never right at all in any of them. If the other stuff was okay, you know, maybe I could deal with the background and him not being in a chair. But, uh, yeah, this is just very strange. Needless to say, I was suspicious at this point. Also, did you notice that gravestone? No, not Link. Well, the second illustration, you've got sort of the same thing again with he's male and he's outside. And that's about it. Everything else is wrong. You can see he's holding something in his hand that doesn't even look like a book. It's just flat. No one knows where Astos, King of the Dark Elves, has gone. And his hand itself is just sort of disappears. There's like an ear coming out of his butt. And his actual ears look like balloons or something. And he looks like maybe he has Space Channel 5 boots. I was more blunt in my response than I usually am, but I already knew at this point that they were using AI, and they begged me to do it again, saying they would get it right this time. Just let them have one more chance. I already figured it probably wasn't going to turn out, but I let them do it anyway, just in case. You know, it's like, maybe I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. So I let them do the next drafts, and now they made him a girl. He's got very giant breasts. He's in a dress instead of his jacket. And I, I don't know what exactly is happening with the ears. They remind me of those imps from uh, the Gremlin movies. Yeah, Gremlins. And then... Obviously, high heel shoes. And at least in a chair now, but we're not really doing any better. There's still no controller, no books, no 
I mean, you know, all of it's raw. And this is the other one he gave at that time, and again, obviously very large breasts. Again, their ears are just weird. It almost looks like there's horns along with the ears. That the chair has a very strange arm, if you look at it. And the shoes are, they, they look like they're supposed to have heels, but they don't. And then they don't properly fit on what looks like just... that. Those don't look like they go into feet. They don't have any curve where it looks like they will become feet at the end. They just keep going down as if there would be hooves there. And again, in another dress, it was very blatantly obvious. There's no way this is anything but AI. I told them to cancel it, and they declined my offers to cancel. They were asking, well, pay me 25, you know, dollars for the work then. For the work that they did so far. And I'm not super picky with artists, but I was hiring an artist. They advertised that they drew stuff, and they clearly did not draw anything. So I wasn't going to pay them. They had nowhere on any of their stuff that they do AI anything. When I would bring up AI, they wouldn't respond to that. They just ignored when I brought it up that this looks like AI. And so they were trying to pester me to, well, just pay me the, the $25 and that, you know, but they didn't do anything. So I wasn't going to pay them when they didn't do anything that I asked for. So I canceled the order. Well, I put in a request to cancel the order, but they declined to cancel it. And they said, no, 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 I'll do it again. You'll like the next ones. And I, I already knew I wasn't going to like the next ones. I was just waiting for them to accept the cancellation. But instead, they did this. So he doesn't even have ears anymore. Now he's got horns, sort of. They're not really attached, they just sort of float on his head. Not even reading a book. They're, he was never supposed to be reading a book. But now he doesn't even have a book, he just has a letter. He's sitting on a chair with a piece of wood or a gold brick or something. I don't know what that is. And he's got a nice suit and a high heels combination. And this last one is the most baffling. Definitely doesn't have any ears or horns. He's got something coming out of the back of his neck. And there's like two chair backs. And you see he's against the back of something. And then there's a chair underneath that. <laughs> so now there's two chairs. We started with no chairs and now there's two. And he's just got a piece of paper or an envelope or something. And again, now, I mean, he's gotten super old now, I don't know why. But, as you can see, it just got crazier as it went on. And I didn't even ask them to do this one. They kept refusing to cancel the order and sending more stuff. Eventually, I had to get support staff to cancel the order because they saw what happened and that he didn't do anything that I asked for. So they just can't forcefully canceled it. So that was my experience running into somebody who was trying to cheat people by saying they're drawing art when they're actually using AI. But on the other hand, I also found a really good artist who's doing the chibis. And they do draw the work, and they do it pretty good. So I'm really happy with that person. And that person was also somebody who had no reviews or anything yet. They were brand new and I just gave them a chance. So sometimes you get a winner and sometimes you don't. I still don't know what I'm really doing in this dungeon. I'm just going to keep going till I collect all the chests. I hope you're enjoying White Mage. We were a thief for a while earlier. There's more bats everywhere like there were at that one place.
Well, back to Thief again, I just had to find the button. I wonder if Black Mage is upset by us killing all of these different animals. Or if it's more like they were driven mad by whatever's going on with the crystals. And it seems like bats must not count, because we're, we're running into all these bats and he's not talking to them. They're not hostile, so it seems like if he could talk to any animal, it would be them. Seems like we still have a ways to go before clearing this dungeon. Luckily, I went and got a bunch more antidotes and prepared more for coming back. White Mage must have something for poison later on, but with how much White Mage can actually cast a spell, I think it might be better just to use an antidote rather than waste one of her spells on that. I am starting to get a bit low on them, so hopefully I can make it through before needing more. Otherwise, I'll have to run all the way back. I'm going to try and push through all the way in one run. I might be cutting it close, though. I would love to know the details of that. Like, the behind the scenes of somebody who's writing one of these books for the game. How much leeway did they have, especially with a game like this, to make stuff up? Like, is it the author who just made up that Black Mage could talk to animals because there wasn't much to the characters? Or was that a bullet point given to them? Like, how much freedom did the author have to do anything? I kind of feel like with a game like this, the details would be pretty sparse, and so they would have to fill up a lot of it in. But I don't know with, like, a big company like Square Enix how much control they would want to keep. That even though a lot of people haven't played the first Final Fantasy, they might still be very, very protective of it and not want to let somebody make up a lot of stuff. But maybe they did let the author do more than you would expect. I would so love to ask one of these authors just questions about their experience working on these books. I tried looking the author up and there wasn't much about them, except the link to their blog, which is still active. So I guess I could try contacting them sometime and ask about it. They have a few posts just this month. I would just have to get a translation that I could send to them. I did check quickly to see if they mentioned it on their blog already, but I'm sure they have NDAs and stuff, especially at the time when they made it. So I didn't see too much other than they announced when it was re um, going to be released. And they also had... I'll mention that when they were done with the project that they were working on, they were going to put up a death flag. So... <laughs> and for... In, in Japanese, that would be like, um... Saying they were going to die, you know, in the game. So I wonder if the project was difficult for them to work on or something, or if they were talking about something else, because they didn't say specifically what they were talking about. They just said, you know, a project. And this is what they would have been working on at the time, so... I, I could see how writing a book for a game like this might be difficult, because there's not a lot of detail to put in. You probably have a somewhat rigid outline you have to follow. And at the same time, a lot of it's kind of blank. Like, the, the characters don't have depth to them going in. Because you've got the silent protagonist, they don't say anything. It would be hard to write a good book about that. But at the same time, you have to follow what happens in the game. So you can't just do what you want. Writing a book for a game like Final Fantasy VII would be probably be pretty easy, but for something like this, there's not too much to a lot of characters. They maybe say two lines, three lines, if they're lucky. So, yeah, that would be tough. If anybody who ever watches this works on something like that, or you have a job writing the novels for video games, 
or maybe something similar, I would love to hear about that experience. Like how you got into it, and how rigid the rules are for what you're allowed to write. How much of an outline that you get that you have to follow. All, all those kind of things. I would love to hear it. I do write stuff myself, but I've always written my own things. I've never written for a company or anybody else. I edit for a company, but that's a lot different. I'm much too controlling of my stuff to write for a company. I want to have complete control over everything I make. I think people who make stuff can understand that. Like, if you're a creative, if you work on something... I mean, first off, why don't you put what you make down in the comments? Like, what is it do you do? you write? Do you draw? Do you make manga? Do you paint? You know, whatever it is. I think that's fairly normal for people to do creative stuff. You're building something that's partly you. And so other people can't just come in and tell you what your stuff is. And I think a lot of creatives don't want to see their stuff get messed up. It looks like I'm out of antidotes. I guess I needed even more. My guys are constantly poisoned. I'll just have to try and push through with potions. Well, looks like we finally ran into something special in this dungeon. Well, these are something new. I don't know if they're going to be extra tough or not. Well, they definitely hit hard. gonna be able to get through them, but he took some good damage there. Was I looking for a crown? Who needs a crown? I'll have to go figure out who needs this. Well, I, I got a crown and I've got a loot, and I don't know where to use either of them. Well, I guess we could get back to the topic while I try to make this long journey back well, with one guy poisoned, white mage dead. <laughs> I think a lot of people are very controlling of their characters, especially these days when you see what happens with the other characters for franchises that have been sold off or taken over. Like, for example, uh, Harley Quinn in the new movies and such. And I'm just talking about her costume here. But her costume was horrible. Like, her original costume was amazing from the animated show. That was a great costume. Every time they try to update it, it looks worse. And the thing is, their original costume, the reason it's so good, she looks nice, but it is also entirely about her character. You get Harley Quinn from it. You get that she's a gymnast. You get that she has an attachment to Joker. You would look at that character and you would be able to guess what her name is. Eventually. Now if you look at the new movies, what does that have to do with Harley Quinn? When they showed, like they're going to make a Harley Quinn movie, and they showed the character, my first question was, who's that? You know, it didn't look anything like Harley Quinn. If I showed you a picture of this character, you would never guess that she had anything to do with the Joker. You would never guess that her name was Harley Quinn. You would never guess she had any sort of Jester theme. <laughs> you would, I mean, honestly, the character that they had looked more like she had something to do with baseball. And that's, you know, somebody new taking over who, you know, at the very basis doesn't seem to get the character. And they do this for most of her costumery designs over the years. They sacrifice part of her character 
to try and make her look sexier. Now the new one just completely threw everything out, seemed like, and just put her in booty shorts. I don't know. But um, even the other redesigns I've seen, they try to lean very heavily into the sexy part and just try to make her sexy and that's all they care about. And they'll usually incorporate some of her color schemes and stuff too. But still, I look at the majority of her costume changes and it completely forgets that she's supposed to be a gymnast. You know, if she's in a corset, how is she breathing, much less doing kickflips? <laughs> and that's how I felt with the new one. She was in these really tight booty shorts, and I'm like, how is she doing anything in those without just ripping them open to the back? <laughs> it doesn't look comfortable at all. It doesn't make her look like a gymnast at all. And that sacrifices part of what her character is supposed to be. Just for, I mean, in this case, it seemed like just for the sake of trying to throw a sexy woman out there and hoping that sells tickets. And I think that's what a lot of people who are creators worry about if somebody gets a hold of their stuff. The original outfit design was really good for her. It was solid, and that's because it was all about her character. You know, you could look at her character, and if I told you what's the name of this character, you would, you know, go through different jester themes and until you found it, you would eventually get to Harley Quinn. And you would know which character she was attached to just by looking at her. You would get her theme right away. You would see her outfit and it looks stretchy. Like she can move around in all different positions with it. So you would get that she's flexible. That she's, you know, even almost like a circus theme where she's a kind of gymnast where you know, like, she could do all these, uh, special moves, <laughs> and it's just, that gets lost in the other designs. And I always liked Harley Quinn. I'm not commenting on the actress or the movies. I never saw the movies, because just looking at the character, I never saw Harley Quinn. So even though I like Harley Quinn, the movies didn't sell me that this is what the character is. She doesn't look like Harley Quinn to me, so I had no interest. You lost me on step one. And so I know I design my characters with very specific looks. And I wouldn't want people messing with them. I mean, it's one thing if somebody draws fan art, you know, that's that's no big deal. But I wouldn't want somebody to come in and then just put my character and a t-shirt and shorts and say, yep, this is the character now. <laughs> to me, it would be like if you just took poison ivy and you said okay we have this random woman and we put her in a pink bikini and this is poison ivy now <laughs> it's like where where's poison ivy just, her skin's not even green you know I, I don't see the character that's just a woman in a pink bikini <laughs> so i think a lot of creatives are very protective of their stuff and i think especially now a lot of people see what happens when other people get a hold of your stuff and that it's, it's very questionable sometimes. There are a lot of very bad design changes that have happened in the recent years. Since we're on the topic, why don't you guys put down below, what's your least favorite character redesign? I want to hear about what you guys make and what your least favorite character redesign is. I wouldn't necessarily say that Harley Quinn is my least favorite, but I don't like it much and it's the one that comes to mind right now. There's probably worse. Another one I could think of is Clover from 999, but I think that's a combination of both her characterization and her design change, because in the original 999, I really liked her character. And I, she seemed to be very popular with a lot of people. And in Virtue's Last Reward, it felt like they brought her back because she was so popular. But her character seemed completely different. Her design was completely different, so it didn't look or act like the character, in my opinion. And I really liked her in the first game, and hated her in the other game. I wanted her to die in the next one. <laughs> so... That's probably just a combination of everything coming together where I found her very annoying the next time I saw her. And it was 
disappointing because she's one of the most interesting characters, I think, in 999 because she can be so different depending on the route you go. And I think that's what attracts so many people to her. She's just an intriguing character. Because unlike many of the others, she can make such a big change depending on what options you pick. So it's always disappointing when that happens and it feels like it messes up a character for you. But I just didn't even see the second one as her character because just like with Harley Quinn, it didn't look like her to me. It felt like somebody else completely. I guess you can have an overall change too, just to the entire series, like in Corpse Party. Like the first Corpse Party is pretty good. It starts out, you have nine just regular people, students, who end up in a horrific horror setting in this school in an alter alternate dimension with all dead students and stuff. And it's just... It's good because you're taking regular people, throwing them into a horrible situation. And they feel helpless in that situation, which is a good setup for horror. It doesn't feel like they have superpowers. You know, you have one student who's into the occult, but that's it. She's just into the occult. She's, she can't necessarily fight the ghosts or anything. And it's normal for a teenage girl to be into the occult. Nothing feels super out of place. They feel like they could be regular students. And then you continue on with the series and it ends up like this. Where you have a booby girl fighting a try-hard anime man and it doesn't even look like the same series anymore. And I really did not like that shift for the series because I thought it started out good. But even in this next game, I remember Book of Shadows just got there was a whole section where two of the girls are in a bath that must last for an hour. And it just has that one picture <laughs> up the entire time. And it's like, even people who are into this probably want you to do something else now. Because they're not even talking about anything interesting. They're just talking nonsense. You know, just, just little pleasantries, nothing important. <laughs> it's just this long winded, boring conversation that never goes anywhere, sitting on one picture. So there can be just like an overall change. That's not necessarily one character redesign, but the entire story and the characters added and everything just don't fit with it anymore. Now the first game, the entire thing is you have normal people in a horrible supernatural situation that they have almost no control over. They can hardly do anything, and they're desperately trying to get out. And then you follow that up with, like, this girl with a skiff fighting this anime man. <laughs> and it doesn't feel real anymore. It doesn't feel grounded. And it doesn't feel like there's any threat, because this, this anime girl is just gonna pull a skiff out of her butt and fight the ghosts or something. <laughs> And it definitely has that feeling of trying so hard to be cool that it misses it completely. Like, I thought Yoshiki was the best character in that by far. And he was just a guy who was trying. It's painful when they try so hard to make them cool and it just does not work. Oh well. I've been trying to find who needs this crown. The Elf Prince doesn't need it. I don't think anybody in Cornelia needed it. Probably somebody I haven't seen yet. So I'm just gonna have to explore and try to find them. I know there are a few places I haven't gone to yet. It seems like I'm still trapped in a small section of the map right now. I wonder if I need to get the airship to get out. I'm assuming there's an airship at some point. It's a very Final Fantasy thing, but maybe or maybe not in the first game. I know there was a cave a while back where I skipped over it because I didn't want to go into a dungeon at that point. I wasn't sure what it was. I'll go check that out now, I guess. I don't remember one of these.
Looks like there's a little bit of a lock. I'm still kind of deciding how to handle stuff like this. I might fast forward through more stuff, or I might even cut out some stuff, but I'm also worried that if I cut out too much, people might get lost. If I just seem to be teleporting all over the place. Or if I end in one spot and I'm in an entirely different spot. But I'll just experiment with it, and over time I'll figure it out. I'm still figuring out my sound and stuff too, because I deal with a lot of background noise here. So if you wonder why sometimes the sound quality might be a little bit strange, it's because I have to remove a lot of stuff. And I don't have a lot of experience doing it. Maybe there's better ways to do it. I don't know them yet. So I'm still learning a lot here. Frontwards, backwards, any way you see. Such a strange spell to swish swishery. Eno, Oldna, Licknack. Swish, swish, Eru. Ouch. My eye. My eye. Ouch. I can't see a blasted thing without my crystal eye. Who could have stolen it from me? So it was Matoya's cave I walked past. Well, it looks like she wants an eye. All I have is a crown and a loot. Maybe she'll want one of those instead. So I need an eyeball and a potion. I have a crown and a loot. I'm gonna have to figure this out. Just need to check for any secrets here before I rob her. So it doesn't look like I could use either of my things yet, so I'm gonna have to keep looking around. There's gonna be some place that I could turn one of these things in. I kinda feel like I'll find some place to put the crown before the loot. I almost feel like maybe the loot will come up randomly towards the end of the game, but I have, I have no idea. It just feels like I got that randomly without really a guide to what to do with it. So I guess there's a little bit of time while walking. Something I noticed was in the book, for the first game, the only art seems to be of the warrior, I think in his upgraded form as a knight. But the other characters don't have any artwork in the book, it doesn't look like. I didn't even see any illustrations during the stories, which is kind of a bummer. I'd like to see what their depictions of these characters are. The second and third games have pictures for all the characters, or at least the main characters, it looks like, but the first one doesn't. I can find cartoony depictions of White Mage, Black Mage, and Thief, but I only really seem to find uh, some detailed rendered artwork of Warrior, and I don't really find anything of the others, so I'd like to see them and what their idea of what these characters look like. I don't know if they've made any, though. That seems kind of weird, doesn't it? That you have these iconic characters and almost no official artwork of them. It feels like there has to be artwork of them, but there's almost nothing out there. And it might be because it started off like Dungeons and Dragons, where the main characters are more like blank slates that you're supposed to fill in. And later on, the characters, you know, even the main characters had their own names and personalities and everything already written in. Whereas the main, first main ones were more blank. But still, you think later on, when it became a big series, they would make more images of the iconic characters, the first ones. You, everybody knows Black Mage, White Mage, and Fighter, and Thief. And yet, it seems like <laughs> there's barely any art. At least I'm talking about official art. Except for the one. It seems like Warrior got a bunch of art, and the others didn't. 
If anybody knows of some special anniversary artwork or anything else where they made something, I'd love to see it. I've always been a big fan of artwork. It's probably why I like things like light novels and stuff. It's just a shame that in the West there tends to be the attitude that things with artwork are meant more for children. Because I'd love to see more books with artwork in them. Or even more animation that's targeted to adults. But usually, if it's animated, it's targeted to children. And somehow, the animation that's targeted to adults here tends to be more immature than the stuff targeted to children. I think that's why I always had a preference for anime and manga. Although, it's kind of a shame because, like Final Fantasy, was influenced by Dungeons and Dragons. Anime in general was influenced by Disney a lot. If you go back and look at the eight cuts of Astro Boy and stuff. I mean, we could have had more mature animation like that, but for some reason it didn't happen over here. It just got seen as four kids here. Actually, when I was in a class, our, our teacher in college, ja I believe it was Japanese class, she showed, uh, she showed one of the eight cuts of Astro Boy, and it's very obvious that there's influence by Disney in it. But I remember there was... Everybody in the class started laughing because there was a butt plug joke in it. And this is obviously a child children's animation. Nobody was expecting it. And so there was just a lot of awkward laughter. And the teacher, because everybody was laughing, looked at it and she, like, she was like, I never realized that joke was in there. <laughs> well, basically, it was either Astro Boy or another robot, you know, bends over, and that's where they plug him in. <laughs> I guess she just never thought about it. But the Disney influence is very obvious in the eight cut. And it's strange to see how it looks so much more cartoonish than anime back then. But then it comes around and now you see our animation being influenced by anime. So it's circular. <laughs> but that's only because anime just decided to do more with it. So people are into it and then... So now over here they're trying to copy what they're doing because that's popular. But really, what they need to do is just make a good product. I feel like I could list a lot of shows that were really good when I was young, but not anymore. I don't really know very many, you know, cartoons or anything that are good these days. Usually when I see what the kids are watching, it just looks very cheaply made. I know there's a few out there that people say are very good. And I, I don't doubt that. I'm sure there's some pretty good ones. But... That's really it. I only hear about a few. I don't hear about a lot of shows that are very good. It's more like there's a couple of standouts. Lally Ho! Lally Ho! Are you gabbed with all Smith? Smith in the smithy is. With a crystal eye, even the blind can see. I hear that the dark elf Astos nicked the one belonging to Amatoya. We've got a hint on where to get that eye now. Guess they're making sure we get that hint. I'm looking for some levy stone. It's supposed to be an amazing material that makes things float in the air. Ah, uh, airships. I think we have airships. There might have been some nitro powder in the castle treasure room when they sealed it up. That's soon. Aye, that's Nerik. He's smashing rocks in the back of the cave. Mind that when it comes to defense, a good armlet can be every bit as vital as body armor. Yeah, you should try one oot sometime. Is there supposed to be a sound or is he just saying there's a sound? I guess maybe putting in sound effects like that might be a bit much for a game this old. It was a little bit confusing when 
he said that sound. And I was like, what sound? <laughs> I just hear the music. Gads! There's a giant rock in the path. I'm so close to opening up my canal, too. If only I had a wee bit of nitro powder, I could nap that rock in one pluff. We're getting a lot of information all at once here. The Earth has started to rot, it began in the West, and knew that decay spreads. If only I could have some of the legendary metal adamantite, I'd be able to craft such a magical sword. Okay, so we've got adamantite, nitro powder, levy stone, and we've got a hint about where to get the eye. We're getting all kinds of stuff in this place. So as it turns out, the dwarves are very nice. I like them. They're cool people. Oh, from here, I think I'll ask around a little bit, but I think I need to go back to where the elves are and go back to that bat place. Because I looked at it a little bit, but I didn't look at the whole thing, so maybe I missed something there. And I didn't see too much else to go to. So I'll probably wrap it up here pretty soon, and next time we'll head to the bats and see if there's anything there that I missed. It looks like we're starting to run into a lot of stuff. We know we need to find nitro powder somewhere. Adamantite, somewhere. We've got a hint about the eye, we just gotta find that dark elf. And then uh, the levy stone, which we don't have yet. Don't know about the loot still, and uh, not sure about the crowns still, but we got both of those already. And then we need a potion for the prince, which we should get as soon as we get the eye, and now we have a hint on how to get the eye. So we're starting to get somewhere. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you had a good time, like and subscribe, it would help a lot. Um, come back next time. We could talk more about books, manga, anime, light novels, video games, lots of other things too. Um, no, I already asked you to put a couple of things in the comments, but why don't you put what your favorite anime is too? I bet you won't guess what mine is, because I, uh, I'm not really sure myself. I've got a, quite a few that I like, um, but I'm not sure which is my favorite. So it's probably, probably be really hard for you to guess. Bye.